Hey there geographers and welcome back to another Mr. Sin video. Today we're talking about unit two, topic seven. We're going into different population policies. We're going to be looking at pronatalism and antinatalism. Now throughout this whole unit, we've been talking about different political, economic, cultural, and also environmental factors that can change our growth rate. Today though, we're focusing on just some political ones. We're gonna talk about pronatalism and antinatalism. These are two different ways in which governments actually can pass policy or influence society to either deter births or promote birth. Now the first topic we're going to talk about is pro-natalist policies. These are policies that actually promote people to have larger families, to have more kids. This happens by the government or organizations using things like propaganda, offering tax incentives, essentially making it easier for people to have children. A lot of times it involves economics. For example, some countries around the world will actually pay for all of the daycare or they'll pay for all your hospital bills for having a child. Others will actually exempt you from income tax. All of this is to try and promote more people to have children. Today we could look at Russia, South Korea, Singapore, or Denmark. All countries are using pro-natalism policies. What they're trying to do is promote their citizens to have more children. Singapore, for example, created a national night out where the entire purpose is to have everyone take off and to be able to then connect with each other and, well, have some babies. They even have a whole song that goes with it promoting going out and watching the fireworks, but the real thing is after the fireworks where you'll do your civic duty. On the other hand, we could look at countries that are actually trying to do the opposite. They're actually implementing antinatalist policies. The goal here is to decrease that growing population. China, for example, has the one child policy. They saw that their population was growing at an extremely fast rate and it needed to be limited. Otherwise, they risked exceeding their carrying capacity. And so they implemented a very controversial law. It was that only one child could be born per a family. Now, recently, China has actually doubled back on that, and then they've started to modify it, and that's because these policies were so effective. By actually limiting family size, China's population growth rate drastically fell, and now they're at risk of actually decreasing too much. So China's trying to now promote more families to have kids, but they also have running into the issue now is the culture has been created that small family sizes is the way to go. Other countries, too, are used propaganda and try to appeal to people's emotions, showing images that show frantic families with all these kids, trying to convey to people that, hey, you don't want this large family because they're worried about overpopulation, not enough resources for people, and not even just enough homes for people to live in. Now, whenever the government gets involved or organizations get involved with reproduction, it's going to be controversial. The important thing here, though, is to understand, well, why would a country have to use antinatalist policies or pro natalist policies. How does that connect into that demographic transition model? We can see that as countries develop again, that population growth rate slowing down, and then we see shifts in government policies. Another thing too that countries could do to try and boost their population is, well, promote immigration. And we're going to be talking about that later in this unit. Now, this was a shorter video, but I hope to help you better understand pro-natalism and anti-natalism. If you found value in this video, consider subscribing so you get notified when I post the next video. Also, if you're struggling with your class at all, make sure you check out my ultimate review packet. It'll help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. All right, that's all I have for today, geographers. I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, I'll see you online.